Are you ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television, featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting, award-winning, conservative voice of television, Wally George! I'll tell you, we have had good audiences, but this is our greatest audience. Except, except for one moron up there who has that thing about Wally's wig. There, ha oh, where is that? Hey, pal, you should have hair as beautiful as my hair. <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay. They better be a great audience. They're up on the stage here with us. Yeah, my gosh, they're almost right here yeah. on the stage. No, it's great to have you. And welcome to you folks at home all across America. This is the program that tells it the way it really is. Now on. On tonight's program, back for a return appearance, we always have him on because when we're talking about illegal aliens, because he's a, an attorney and he's also the illegal alien's best friend. What do you think about that? We're gonna have we're gonna have Manuel Lopez here, and we're talking about the bilingual ballot. I don't think we should have bilingual anything. And we're also talking about the movement to make English the official language in America, and it should be the official language in America. But Manuel doesn't think so. We'll get to him, won't we? And then we, and then we have a guy who thinks he's a real macho man, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He sure does. He, he wants to come on. He's mad at me because I've called wrestling phony. You know? so, so he thinks he's going to come on and scare me and intimidate me. Hey, this little puny runt calls himself Ripper Savage. He also calls himself, in, in parentheses, the Bronx Barbarian. Oh. Hey, we're ready for him, right? Hey, let's introduce, let's introduce our great crew now. In the booth, directing us, as always, the bombastic Brian Lockwood. The star himself, the one, the only, Oscar! And our, and our great producer, Mary Pisano! And, uh, and of course, the one, the only, David Kennedy. There he is. Okay. Well, David, we're off to a start tonight. I'll Ripper's say. out there getting greased up now. Ready oh, to come yeah. <laughs> hey, he He's needs, getting ready. He needs, he needs more than grease to take me on, right? <laughs> Maybe it's oil now. Okay. Oh. 
All right, now we're going we're gonna to take some questions from our, our great audience here tonight. And we've hit an all-time high tonight, David. I think we have. Without exaggeration, there are, let me see. 5,000. 16,000 tonight. <laughs> All right, now it's time for my commentary of the night, and then we'll get to some questions from our great audience here. You know, we've got to do something about smoking in this country, right? Yeah! Now, I'm not, now, I'm not just... Hold, hold, I'm not just talking about pot. That's bad enough. But I'm talking about smoking just regular cigarettes. Now, let me tell you something. I want to tell you, cigarettes are killing millions of Americans every year, and we're just sitting around here letting it happen. Now, the American Cancer Society says that in 1982, over 300,000 Americans died from smoking-related diseases, and that's a disaster, right? Oh, yeah. trying to put a stop to smoking. We're not trying to stop people from smoking. We're even doing things to encourage it, like lowering the federal excise tax on a pack of cigarettes. That is ludicrous. We shouldn't lower the tax on cigarettes. We should raise it, right? <laughs> And you know, why is the government doing that? Why do they even talk about lowering taxes on cigarettes? I'll tell you why. To please the tobacco industry, that's why. I'll tell you one thing. I don't give a damn about... I don't give a damn about trying to help make money for the tobacco industry. I give a damn about saving American lives. And I'll tell you what, we can also save the government a lot of money, too. We should not lower the tax on a pack of cigarettes. Let's raise it. Let's really try to discourage people from smoking. Let's raise that tax to one dollar a pack. What do you say? <laughs> Now, that should discourage a few people from smoking, I, I would think. Do you know? Do you know that, hold it down, do you know that the government is spending about $40 million a year on patients who are smoking, who are suffering from smoking-related diseases? They're spend, the government, spending $40 billion a year on patients who are suffering from smoking-related diseases. This whole thing is getting completely out of hand. The label, the label on the pack of a cigarettes by the Surgeon General stating that smoking is dangerous to your health obviously is not enough. Smokers aren't paying any attention to it at all. We've got to make Congress stop listening to the tobacco industry lobbyists and start thinking about saving American lives, right? <laughs> say this, a good way to start is by raising taxes on cigarettes to one dollar a pack. Let's do it right now. I'll be right back. Welcome back, I'm Wally George, and this is the Hot Show Around America Hot Seat. And David, do you have a comment about my opening remarks there? Yeah, a dollar a pack tax, we either cut down on smoking or cut down the national debt, one or the other. Yeah, about that. get to some questions from, from, our, from our, our audience in just a moment, but first it's time for the mailbag! Yeah. 
Now, this is a guy uh, who's, who signs himself just John, and he says, he says, hey, hey, Walty. Oh, come on. <laughs> He says, he's, he's after reading this letter, you'll probably think I'm slightly mentally ill. <laughs> he's, I am in favor of legalizing prostitution. Yeah! He says, I'm even in favor of legalizing teenage prostitution. Let me tell you something, John. I don't think you're slightly mentally ill. I think you're extremely mentally ill. How old is John? 77? Now, here's another really uh, maniac. He calls himself Willie D. <laughs> and he says, he says, I don't know what all this uh, hoopla, hoopla has been about drugs in baseball. He says, I played college baseball from 1976 to 1979, and I'm proud to say that I used drugs in every game I played in. He says, hey, Wally. He says, he says, hey, Wally, get with it. Drugs help athletes. Drugs help people. Hey, pal, I have news for you. It's going to help you get into a straitjacket, right? Here's, uh, here's a letter from uh, Lee McChuckley, I guess it is. Dear, dear Wally George, why don't you like Phil Donahue? Uh, <laughs> he says, he says, don't you, he says, don't you uh, find Phil to be an intelligent, respectful, empathetic human being? No, I find him to be a wimp, and he's boring. Here's one. Here's one that's quite interesting. This comes from a girl. Her name is Carol Ann Luce. She says, Dear Wally, I watch your show all the time now, especially since my husband has been away for a while. I noticed you're pooping it though. <laughs> Here's a great one. Here's a great one. I love it. Hey, this comes from Ken Pellman, a great letter. He says, Dear Wally, your birthday should be a national holiday. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ken. And now we're, we're going to go to some questions from our studio audience. Let's bring our first holy mackerel. Hold on. I'm not going to ask who you are. I'm going to ask what you are. Uh, what is your name and what's your question? All right, my name's Trix. My name's Trix. I'm from Hollywood. Me and my buddies want to invite you down with us next Friday. Oh, no. Want to take you? Oh, no. Want to take you down to the Rainbow Bar and Grill? We want to set you up with some action. Get out of here. We <laughs> know some sleeping girls. You may not even need it. Don't go, Wally. You won't be back. Anytime you'll... 
anytime you'll find me in Hollywood with that freak oh, huh? Yeah. Okay, yes. Yes, sir. Wally. Wally, my name is Dave, uh, and I'd like to ask you what you think about. Uh, I'd like to ask you what you think about the public high schools allowing illegal aliens uh, to attend and uh, get their their uh, high school diplomas, where Americans have to show their diplomas and be educated at the same time with people that, that can't speak our that cannot speak our language, so that lowers the Americans' educational level. Okay, this I I said this about all illegal aliens, you know, and we're going to be talking about that in a, in a yeah. few minutes part of our program. Illegal aliens are just that. They are in this country illegal and they should get the heck out of here. What you think about homosexuality in the armed forces? Oh, well, I'll tell you. Homosexuals do not belong in the armed forces. They do not. They do not belong in the Boy Scouts. And, 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 and I'll tell you this: the only place I think they do belong is in West Hollywood. Okay. All right, hold on. Yes. Phil, I want to know um, what, you think, what you think about yes. Louis Farrakhan's remarks. Well, Louis Farrakhan has proved himself to be a racist and a bigot. Any man who will stand up in, in front of a people and say that Adolf Hitler is a great, was a great man, I mean, come on. say we cannot have people like Farrakhan running around this country spitting out hatred and racism and bigotry, right? Okay. Well, my name is Gordon. I'd like to know... Hold it down, gang. My name is Gordon. I'd like to know what you think about the guardian angels and their programs of taking the law into their own hands to administer justice. Well, I'll tell you what. We, we have a heck of a lot of crime going on and so much crime that the police sometimes can't take care of it all. And I say thank God for organizations like the guardian angels. Right. Okay, my name's Ron, and I'd like to know what you think about young teenage kids putting on uh, makeup and acting like young girls. Well, I'll tell you where they belong. Hey, they belong with, with that guy who was, who was up here a few minutes ago from Hollywood. I'll be right back. and welcome back to Hot Sea all across America, wherever you are. I hope you make this a, a weekly habit. And hey, call a friend and tell them to tune in to this particular station uh, wherever you are watching and uh, have them watch, right? Now, David Kennedy, it's time to introduce our first guest on the Hot Seat tonight. Okay, here he is back again, supporting illegal aliens, bilingual education, and a bunch of other ridiculous things. Manuel Lopez. <laughs> see, once again, you have great support here tonight. Yeah, it's a very exciting week. They're debating the immigration bill in Congress, and I see that there's some people here that are trying to legislate English in, as an official language. Right. Now, you are, you are an attorney at law here in, here in the city of Los Angeles. That's correct. And I can't understand, as a man who I would think would stand for law and order, as you are an attorney at law, and, and you've been on this show several times, why in the world, as an attorney, would you be in favor of anything that is illegal? And illegal aliens are here illegally, right? As an, as an, 
attorney manual, how can you sit there and be advocating and, and promoting something that is illegal in this country? Well, it's it's not necessarily illegal. What we have oh, here, we, 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 we have a situation. It's very easy to explain if you want to listen. No. We're, 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 they don't want to. There's, there's, there's a historical point of view to this whole thing. Uh, the undocumented people traditionally have made this country strong. This country was built by immigrants. The people that, that founded this country came from England fighting persecution. Man, don't go traditionally, into a big traditionally, here. The, uh, the doors of this country have been open to people that are coming here to work. I have a new proposal which is rather exciting today. Uh, that's right. And it's it's a first it's a first uh, national TV. Uh, we met with our executive committee of our organization. Inasmuch as Congress has reached an impasse on the immigration bill, the proposal calls for the following. Hurry that, up, that, Manuel. That, four, four, fourteen million that, that fourteen million people be allowed to immigrate, giving preference to the ones that are here. Provided they pay $5,000 each with our application, that'll wipe out the national debt, oh, it'll yeah. stimulate the economy, $5, and we'll revitalize this country. Annual. We have a lot. We have, we have a lot. Hold on. We have a lot of it's, things. It's going to be a renaissance for this country. And, and in the same way that the immigrants founded this country, it's going to give this country another shot in the arm. We're going to wipe out the national debt, and oh, again, we'll on. prove that immigrants are valuable to this country. The whole thing is, Manuel, whether you know it or not, and we'll talk about this at length later on in the program. We have, we have other things to go to. Whether you know it or not, whether you will admit it or not, illegal aliens are are causing problems in this country, are taking jobs away from American citizens in this country, and I say illegal aliens should be thrown out of here. We'll get back to the aliens in a minute, but there are other things I, I want to get to first that we haven't had a chance to talk to with you on the air. Right. right now, there is a new movement. I, I'd like to respond, first of all. Manual. Economists have shown. Hold on just a minute. The, the latest economic information indicates that immigrants make this country strong because they're consumers. They buy American cars, they buy American products, and they stimulate the economy. Let's get, into, let's get into some other, other subjects that we have to get into today. All right. there, there is a movement now all across America to make English the official language. It's a ridiculous movement. Oh. Don't you realize or, since... Or a Chevy, right? Hey, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Manuel, since this country was founded, the English language has been the language that is, is spoken in this country, and I agree with former... Wait a minute before you speak. Okay, go ahead. And I agree with former Senator Sam Hayakawa. English always has been the language in this country. We should officially make it the, the language here in this country, and anybody who cannot read it and write it and speak it should not be a citizen of this yeah. country. You know, the, uh, the, the founding fathers of this country, like Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin, spoke many languages. They spoke French, they knew Latin, they knew Greek. Uh, and Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. There, there are certain things that we do by tradition and convention in this country. We don't have to legislate it. Like, we, 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 we hey, don't, speak we, to we me, Manuel. I'm the, the host here. Speak okay. to me. Fine. To me. If you're the host, I must Don't be. Hold your I, microphone. I, 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 must, I must be the parasite or something. But listen, in, in this country, we have areas that have spoken French, Louisiana, and traditionally for four centuries in the Southwest, Spanish has been spoken. It's unnecessary to legislate something into law because by tradition we speak English here, and there's no hey, contest. Manual, hold on a minute. What we should do is learn how to speak English. What I'm saying is. What I'm saying is, why should this country... It's more important to learn how to speak English than to hey, register. Hey, zip it, Manuel, zip it. Now, hold on. What I'm 
saying, man. Why should this country be any different? If you go to France, you learn French. If you go to China and live there, you learn Chinese. If you come to America, you learn English. I'll be right back. Okay. Our guest is uh, Attorney Manuel Lopez, the illegal alien's best friend. And I'll tell you, I don't know why he supports anybody who is doing something illegal. Do you? No. Now, Manuel, uh, uh, you were saying how you're against the English language being... I'm not. I'm not. What I'm saying, it's unnecessary to legislate English as an official language because a lot of things are done worldwide either by convention or by custom and this, this the speaking of english in this country is done by a custom and tradition no it is necessary it, to it's put unnecessary the, because you you shun other people you bring attention to differences and this country we want to bring people together not divide them i'll tell you uh, hey divisive, hold on manual to do that. i'll tell you the best way we can bring them all together is all together we'll speak english yeah. and hey emmanuel I got a bumper strip I want to give to you to put on your car. How about that, huh? There you are, Manuel. There you go, Manuel. I want to, I want to thank you. Well, I'll put this one. I'll put this one on with the one that says I love French, I love Spanish. Oh and yeah, I love sure. There you go. <laughs> I want to tell you, now you also, Manuel, you also are strongly in favor of the bilingual ballot, are you not? Yes, because I think it's it's a it's a temporary. Why? Why? Because the bilingual ballot supposedly is a temporary thing. In other words, while people are learning English, you know, they can vote because it's more important to vote than to be excluded because you can't read the proposition. So while the people are learning English, it's not a permanent thing. They should be allowed to uh, vote in their native language. Well, you know, isn't it strange, Manuel, because right now here in Southern California, they've ruled against you. They agree with me. They're no longer printing the bilingual ballot. How do you explain that? Well, it doesn't necessarily make it right or fair. I mean, there's a lot of errors oh, no. committed all the oh, time. Oh, no. The, 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 all the people here in California are wrong. Manuel's right, huh? It makes, I'll tell you why. It makes it, it makes it very fair, Manuel, because the bilingual ballot was not being printed in French and Chinese and German and, you see, we have a melting pot of what, all people. What's about this, there should never be a price, uh, a price on, the, on the right to suffrage. In other words, the right to vote is paramount and we should never have a price tag on that. I say, here's what we should have. Yes, we should have a price tag on being a, a citizen of this country. That's uh, unconstitutional, like the oh, poll tax in, in, uh, in Texas, that was rule unconstitutional. If you make somebody vote in English, it's almost like exacting a requirement, and a requirement like that could be invidious. Manuel, like you are so wrong. There should be a price tag it, it, on citizenship. It is an honor. It is a privilege. You're mixing apples and oranges again, because uh, I am... I, I, oh. quarrel with, hey, with I may, an honor. It's, it's an honor and privilege. Fine. Hey, I may be mixing apples and oranges. What, what does that have to do with language? That's hey, hold on, Manuel. Man, I may be mixing... Citizenship is manual. language is something else. Hold on a minute. What I was trying to tell you is, it is an honor and a privilege to be a citizen of this... Co Wait, I finished. I have no quarrel with Let that. me finish. Fine. Big mouth. Hold on a minute. <laughs> What I'm saying is, in this country, people should have to earn the right to be a citizen of this great country. And I think one of the prerequisites before we hand out that citizenship paper, I say before you become a citizen, you must learn to read and write the English language. Yes, David. What do you What do you got against English anyway? You I, seem I, to have learned to speak I, it rather really well. Matter, I love English. What, why can't your countrymen learn if you because, did? Because I, I, it, you know, it's it's not a matter of, of loving or, or not loving English. I love English. In fact, I like to hear it spoken properly, and I haven't heard anyone here this evening speak it properly. Oh. Oh. 
but but I, I think it's it's a fallacy. It's a fallacy to think that if if you like English, that you have to exclude other languages. Let, let me say this, man. I, I, th I think we're miss, we're missing out and losing a lot if we can't speak other languages. And manual time is rolling us. by. Well, let, let me get into one uh, one issue because you always are spouting off on the illegal aliens, and now of course it's it's a big subject. Do you know? Save the whales. They can spout. Let off. me tell you this. <laughs> Emmanuel, the illegal aliens continue to be a disaster here in this country. They're a help. The latest studies show that they're Can a help. Can I finish one sentence? Sure, go ahead. It's my show, Big Mouth. Fine. The illegal aliens continue to be a disaster here in America. Let me give you a fact. In 1984, according to the INS, 1.6 million illegal aliens were caught and deported. God knows how many more million got across the border and weren't deported, right? I say this, Daniel. If, if an illegal alien wants to become an American citizen, he should apply. And why should he, he get across the border? It's unfair to the millions of people who are standing in line legally waiting to become legal citizens. Am I right? Yeah. My, my response to that is that if anybody watched the debates in Congress this week, you noticed that the growers want 350,000 workers to come in. So big money is moving to bring people in. No, it's irresponsible to bring on. them in and to leave them in the lurch. If you're going to bring people in, give them all the rights. You are misleading them. The, the, I'm not. The farmers want to bring them in just, just on a very temporary basis. Well, that's ridiculous. It's, uh, like, just, it's like bringing in slaves. They want, with, they want to bring them out on a temporary basis. What rights do they want? They get welfare already. No, I'm saying this. Yeah. Manuel, I will wind it up by saying this. As an attorney, I think you should know it's wrong. There, there, are, there are millions of people from every country in the world waiting very patiently, legally, to get their citizenship papers before they come across the border. I say everybody should wait their turn, and illegal aliens should be tossed out of here. <laughs> Welcome back to Hot Seat. I'm Wally George. And, and by the way, you across America, if, if you're visiting, if you're planning to visit here in Southern California soon, you can call these numbers on your screen and get tickets for our show. Or for those of you who... And for those of you who live here in, in Southern California and you'd like to come on down, just call the numbers you're seeing now in the uh, 213 of the 818 area code. It's 464-6111. Leave the, uh, your name and your telephone number and how many uh, tickets you want, and we'll get you down here as soon as we possibly can on a, on a Wednesday night taping about 7 o'clock. Now, in the 714 area code... <laughs> It's 999. 5,000! All right, here we go. One more time. 999. 5,000! 999. 5,000! 999. 5,000! One more time. 999. 5,000! That's it. And, and if you want to write to me, I love to get your letters. I read every letter that you write, and some of them I read on the air here. Maybe you have some idea of some uh, liberal lunatic who would want to debate me here. Write to me. And if you want information about the official Wally George fan club, we'll send it to you about, about how you can, you can get your newsletter and your bumper strip and all that kind of stuff. So write to me. Our address is Wally George, Hot Seat, P.O. Box 56 TV, Anaheim, California, 92803. That's Wally George, Hot Seat, P.O. Box 56 TV, Anaheim, California, 92803. And now, hold on. David, now, now we're, we're going from the ridiculous to the even more ridiculous. Okay. It's time. 
for our next ludicrous guest on the hot seat. David, if you will. Okay, our next guest is a professional wrestler, Ripper Savage. Here he is. Where is he? a Nazi youth meeting or something. Okay, Ripper. Yeah, you got yourself you a nice little group of idiots over here. Hey, hey. Hey, Ripper. Ripper Savage, what kind of an idiot are you anyway? I think it's more of an idiot to talk to me like that, pal, because you don't know what the Ripper's all about. But we won't talk about oh, that hold now. On, hold wait, on. don't interrupt me when I'm talking. Hey, wait First a, of all, first of all, Sit down in your chair. Don't tell me what to do. Sit your chair. I want to tell you. I want to tell you. First of all, if you if you'd shut your animals up, Wally George, I want to explain why I'm here. Now, hold That's on. right. Uh -oh. You will not call my audience animals, you animal. Let me just ask you what. Let me just ask you one question. Let me just ask you one question. Who's a, who is a bigger idiot, the moron or the people who follow the moron? Okay, but first of all, Wait, let me ask you, hold on. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Let's get to your name, Ripper Savage. That's right. You know what I think they should call him? Hey, they shouldn't call him Ripper Savage. They should, should call him Peter Pennywaste. That's very cute, Wally George, you know? You're very clever. Your, your remarks are so cutting. They really hurt me. You see, they just cut me up. But let me tell you something, Mike. First of all, First of all, you look older in person than you do on TV. Oh. But we won't talk about that now. I want to talk wait, about wait, why. Wait Don't a interrupt me when I'm talking. Wait a minute. If you just shut your mouth for one minute and let me explain why I'm why I'm here. First of all, I wasn't invited here. I want you morons to know I don't appreciate company like yours or this fool over here. The reason I'm here. No, wait a minute. Is, wait, you sit down, boy. I ain't done talking. The reason that I'm here. The reason that I'm here is because this man over here has gotten on the air and has maligned my sport, which is professional wrestling, and I can't even straighten this man out. I can't just straighten this man out. Hold on. I think, first of all, we better... Hold on. Hey, we better straighten out you and your two-tone hairdo. What do you think? Okay, first of all... Hold on, Ripper, hold on. You know, Hey, you don't belong. Looking at you, you don't belong in the ring. You belong in. Hey, he doesn't belong in in the ring. He belongs in West Hollywood. Well, you you probably know about West Hollywood with that with that rug that you're wearing on your hair. This is and, my own hair, you idiot. Yeah, it sure is. But let me tell you something, my geriatric friend. Let me tell you something, my geriatric friend. Oh, that's friend. cute. cute. Yeah, it is cute, isn't it? Uh, first of all, you come in here jawjacking about wrestling, this and that. I want to show you people a true athlete. I want to show you a true athlete, and we're going to see if you... You know, I get letters all the time from parents. I get letters all the time from parents saying, Ripper, we want our boys to grow up to be like you. They have all these disgusting idols like like Michael Jackson and Boy George and, and, and his grandfather, Wally Hold George. Hold on, Ripper. This a real athlete. No, wait, 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 Ripper. We're going to show, show the tape first. S sit down a minute. Show, All right. Show a tape. Gonna, now, we're going to see he, some greatness now. He people. says what a great athlete he, he is. True. I want to show you. Hold on. Watch your, your, 
<laughs> you in the studio audience, watch your monitor. I want you to see how this maniac behaves in the wrestling ring. Here is Ripper in action. There he is. <laughs> Can they hear me? Can they hear me out in the, in the oh, audience? Oh, come on. Let me explain to you what that is. Yeah. 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 Wait, hey, what kind of a thing? That... <laughs> hey, look at that man suffer. This beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know who the king of the what? ring is. What kind of theatrics was that you were playing in the ring there? Huh? Why don't you ask that man who's in the hospital right now with a messed up back from that backbreaker and them kicks to the lower back. I want to tell you something. I enjoy messing people up in the ring, Wally George. Oh. I would enjoy messing you up, my skinny, pathetic friend. Hey, listen. That's right. Listen, I want to tell you one thing, Ripper <laughs> Savage. At me, pal. Hold on. What? You are not a wrestler. You, you can't even call it sport. What you are is an actor and a bad actor. Right. You, Wally George, are a bad actor. You have you have a phony show. You're phony. You come on here with all this phony patriotism. Oh, that's right. Pretending like you're for this country. The only thing about this country you like are them little green things. Me and you have one thing in common. We like money. Except yet I wrestle. I fight for my money. You lie and make up things. You, you, look, you go with anything that these morons believe in so that they'll give you their you. bucks, pal. Hold on. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. Hey, you know what? You are probably the phoniest, most revolting wrestler I've ever seen in my life. And if I... Hold on. I would throw you off this stage right now, but I want my audience to get a crack at you. I'll be right back. I like this... Okay, welcome back. And our guest here is a real sweetheart, Ripper Savage. Oh. Oh, I'll tell you. Okay, Wormy George, do you have any questions to ask me? I yeah. want to show this audience my great physique. I know all the fans oh, out there. Oh, come they, on. They dream about me. They've heard about me. I'm going to show them what I have. Pal. Wait a minute. Let me ask you a couple okay, questions you first. Questions you first. know darn well, as well as everybody else out here does, that wrestling is not a sport. It's an entertainment, right? Yeah. And, and, and first of all, First of all, most wrestlers are so terribly out of shape with their pot bellies and everything, they're a disgrace to wrestling. Okay, my critical friend, let me show you what shape is. Okay, I want all the babes to stand in front of the TV. You've been waiting for this ever since I come on. Oh. Oh. Smart, all right, know. all right, Savage. Hold on, hold on. Hey, let me tell you something. Hey, hey, listen. Since you've taken your uh, off your shirt, I, I think I can fix you up. Let's get uh, jewelry, pal. Hey, no, no I, I think I can fix you up with a with a heavy date down on Santa Monica Boulevard, huh? Okay, come on up. Yes, 
Yes. First of all, let me come tell on. you something. Where I come from, the rough part of New York, and you need these things. First of all, where I come from, we feed, we throw guys like you in the sewer to feed the alligators, hey, pal. Hey, I have news for you. You're gonna need those things when you leave this studio. What do you think? Good. I love it, man. Okay, go ahead. I love yes. It. Hey, Savage, how you doing, man? My name's Jerry. I was just wondering, do steroids really make you a man? Ah, all right. Uh, well, they obviously, haven't, they obviously haven't worked on you, boy. Ah, uh, that's my old lady. Okay. Well, go ahead, hold it. Hold it. I'm Tom from Fountain Valley, and I want to ask you, what kind of example are you setting for the youth of America? Yeah! yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. I, Ripper Savage, re You're represent ludicrous. the new wave of sports in America. I am the idol of American youth. I am... Oh. Every kid in the world wishes they could wishes they could kick heads in for a living. They could party like the Ripper does. They could have beautiful girlfriends like the Ripper has. That's right. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Does that wait a minute. Question? Hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ripper, hey, audience, do you really think he's the idol of the young people? Go ahead. No, no, they love me down deep in their heart. Go ahead. Chris, Chris. All right, let's hear a big savage growl. The count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, let's hear a big growl. Big growl. Come on. One, two, three. Come on, let's hear a savage growl. You're going to hear a growl when I get my hands on that skinny little neck of yours, pal. These are a bunch of any intelligent questions. So all I heard was stupidity. Yes. Yeah, if you yes. and all your pro wrestling buddies are such good athletes, why don't you play real sports? Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because the Ripper, the Ripper was a champion at many sports. The Ripper was a champion athlete, a champion, champion bodybuilder, a champion weightlifter, a champion amateur wrestler. I am good at everything I try. Hold on. You are looking on. at a superhuman being right here. Hey. That's right. Hold I am on. Good at everything. Hold on. Let me answer that. Hey the, only th hey, the only thing you're a champion at is you are a champion chump, right? Uh, you watch your talk. You watch it. God. What? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs>